Uh, all right, so first we're going to identify the sex of the fish. And we can't identify the sex externally, so we have to cut them open. Um, we're expecting a spotted gar of this size to be female, so we have to use uh, tin snips to cut through. And so we'll slice up through here. get into the body cavity. Really all we need with this particular fish is to identify the sex. Um, so we shouldn't have to cut up too far. So as we open up in here, we can see that it's a female. You can see the large ovaries there with the ova or the uh, immature eggs in here. So you can see they're pretty large. The other ovary is farther anterior up towards the top. And if we were to look at the gamete release pathways, they would be distinctly different from the males. They would look like a solid connection um, as opposed to a very threaded connection. Um, but here again, you can see uh, very obvious uh, immature eggs. So that would indicate that this is a female. So here you can see the uh, large ovaries. And so we're going to show you the oviducts, which is the connection of the ovary to the rest of the system. So here you can see this uh, connection right here. So. In the females, it'll look like a pretty consistent connection from the, I believe it's around the kidneys, to the uh, ovaries. In males, it'll look like a series of thin threads. Um, so with the females, this is what we use to identify the sex um, definitively between males and females. Also behind it, you can see part of the gas bladder, which runs the length of the uh, dorsal part, uh, portion of the fish. Let's go. Okay, so now we're going to dissect this specimen, which is uh, specimen number two from Van Auken Lake. Um, we would probably expect this to be a male. It's kind of intermediate in size. Um, it would be small for a female, maybe on the you know, average to large size for a male. Um, and this is a 64 centimeter long specimen. So we get an idea size there. Kind of jaws have been kind of the muscles for the jaws have been loosened up there so you can get a good idea of the teeth. The wild fish tend to have like the larger uh, teeth than with the fish that are raised in captivity. And here you can also see the uh, forked tongue and this kind of fork here helps in guiding the fish making sure they're head first in most cases and uh, they swallow the fish whole like that. So as with the larger specimen. I'm going to cut up from the opening right here and just move from posterior to anterior. So we put the tin snips there, We're cutting up. And sometimes if we're not within the body cavity, we can kind of retrace, retrace our steps. far up so we can hopefully get a good view of the fish. So then open up right here and as we can see this one appears to be a male. There's very little uh, in terms of the mature or I guess ready to go gonads because these fish were caught after the spawning season. But if you look right here you can see that we have testes as opposed to the ovaries that we would see in the female. The dark structure you see running here is the liver, and then here is one of the testes, this structure right here. And hopefully I'll be able to show you the connective tissue. So again, the gamete release pathways are the best way of uh, identifying the sex of the fish in case you can't see the eggs. And so here you can see this connection looks 
like a series of uh, thin threads. It's not a necessarily a solid connection. You can see some thicker connections, more anterior, and then one thicker connection, more posterior there. So again, it's kind of the series of threads. That's the vasa efferentia. In females, it would be one solid and relatively consistent looking connection.